Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Virgin Galactic's new Spaceship 2 will roll out next, DJI to offer a new geofencing system for their UAVs. It's a long haul from the UK to Australia in an open cockpit biplane. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 6, 2016, I'm not used to that yet, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The second Spaceship 2 is scheduled for rollout from a hangar at Mojave Air and Spaceport on February 19th, according to media advisories from Virgin Galactic, and none other than Professor Stephen Hawking has been invited to be on hand for the festivities. Virgin Galactic founder Sir Richard Branson said he invited Hawking to attend the rollout if he is well enough to travel. Branson sat for an interview with the British newspaper The Independent, in which he said Hawking would name the new spacecraft. The first Spaceship 2 was named VSS Enterprise. The VSS stands for Virgin Galactic Spaceship. Branson promised Hawking a free ride aboard the spacecraft as a way to grant the renowned scientist his wish to travel in space. It is also said to be the only free ticket offered to a passenger. The flight test schedule for the new spacecraft has not yet been firmly established. As a side note to this report, Professor Hawking's experienced a zero-gravity flight about nine years ago, and a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell was there to record this event. You'll find the amazing story of this flight, along with outstanding photographs, in Jim's book, Beyond the Blue. And to hear Jim tell it, it was quite an experience to be a part of. As the UAV industry faces new restrictions and concerns about where the small aircraft may and may not fly, UAV maker DJI has launched a public beta version of its new geofencing system in North America and Europe. Geospatial Environment Online (GEO) will provide drone users with up-to-date guidance on locations where flight may be restricted. Users will have access to live information about areas temporarily restricted from flight, major stadium events, VIP travel, and other changing circumstances. The GEO system will also show restricted areas around locations like prisons, power plants, and other sensitive areas where drone flight would raise non-aviation security concerns. A system is also being put into place where drone operators with verified DJI accounts can release restrictions on certain areas. However, areas where drone flight is not allowed, such as Washington, D.C., are locked in. DJI expects to release a final version of GEO after completion of this short beta period after the break from the UK to Australia in a Stearman. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Tracy Curtis Taylor successfully completed her United Kingdom to Australia flight on January 1st, recreating a pioneering 1930 solo flight by Amy Johnson. Tracy departed Farnborough Airport on October 1, 2015, on her solo flight in a 1942 Boeing Stearman named the Spirit of Armitess. The flight covered 13,000 miles, included 50 legs, crossing 23 countries. Women in Aviation International President Dr. Peggy Chabrian reminds us that Tracy is a keynote speaker at the 2016 International Women in Aviation Conference, March 10 through the 12th, in Nashville at the Friday morning general session. In conjunction with Tracy's successful flight, Amy Johnson will be inducted into WAI's International Pioneer Hall of Fame. Amy is perhaps Great Britain's most well-known aviatrix and the settler of several flight records, including the London to Australia flight that Tracy replicated. Tracy joins a lineup of fascinating speakers at the International Women in Aviation Conference that includes FAA Administrator Michael Huerta. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
T-28 is a fantastic airplane built uh, to replace the T-6 as a tricycle geared airplane uh, to train people for the jet age in the 1950s. In this video, you'll see the North American T-28 in action. It's a brute of an airplane that hardly looks like it was built as a trainer plane. Search T-28s at AirVenture on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Chicago Airport Police are told to hide. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The approximately 300 unarmed police officers at Chicago's O'Hare and Midway airports have been given official instructions in the event of an active shooter situation. The instructions are to hide if evacuation is not possible. The instructions include how to hide. The documentary film, Sunshine Superman, will be shown on CNN in its television premiere on January 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The film follows the career of Carl Banish, known as the father of base jumping. To survive a ditching in the Atlantic Ocean is a tough way to be introduced to aviation. Ava Murray was a passenger aboard a Cessna 206 that ditched four years ago, but she has now decided to obtain a pilot certificate to cure her nervousness about flying. The U.S. Navy will close down one of its two Special Operations Helicopter Squadrons in an effort to save money while retaining the unit's Special Operations expertise. Norfolk Base Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 84 will be closed in March. Fort Wayne Aero Center, one of AFUEL's newest branded dealers, opened for business on New Year's Day. They say they have a strong emphasis on customer service and strive to provide their guests with heightened support for an unparalleled experience. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The successful recovery by SpaceX on land of a Falcon 9 booster following an orbital insertion mission apparently has the Russians concerned about what they charge for spaceflight. The goal of Elon Musk and SpaceX is to reduce the cost of getting payloads both manned and unmanned into orbit. And Bloomberg News reports that Russia is now considering how to make its flights cheaper to maintain its market share, knowing that such launches are a cash cow for Moscow. While Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin, who is in charge of defense and aerospace in Russia, said in a TV interview that Musk's work will be treated with respect, he also added, quote, competitors are stepping on our toes, end quote. Here's a memo to the Russians. That's the way free enterprise works. Your toes get stepped on by competitors. Bloomberg reports that Russia's space industry has been hit by the double whammy of chronic underfunding and the loss of key scientists after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of ever 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.